Yo, 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 welcome. Today is going to be a bit of a comparison of sorts. It's going to be trying to achieve two aims. One, it's going to be comparing the create a club feature in the base game football manager alongside the editor, uh, the editor's ability to just create a club completely from scratch. I'm going to be kind of like comparing and contrasting these two things so that you can see kind of like the advantages and disadvantages. One of them is just so much more powerful than the other, but it really comes down to what your needs are. So the first thing this video is going to be doing is just giving people an understanding of what you can do on each. And also then the second feature is to give people who are like doing databases the kind of a more in-depth understanding of like the club screen and what all of the different features and things do and how to manipulate and work with all those different things. So I'm trying to, two birds at one stone here, that's what I'm trying to do at the moment. <clears throat> so first I'm just going to show you the create a club feature itself. You get there through start game, create a club. Now it'll ask you like normal, how do you want to load any editor databases? Do you want to load your leagues? Like, um, a bit of a pro move you can do here is actually create a club and put it into a league and then do create a club, take that club and then essentially like create a club out of your club. And I'll explain where that can be useful later on because there's one severe disadvantage to creating a club through the editor and it's mitigated by create a club in the game and that's squad selection. It's just so much easier to do it in this. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how this works. Premier League, go on. Yeah, we'll do all this. So start game, and as you've seen, like, all I've really had to do is just select leagues at the moment. So I'll come back to you when this is done. And then what you've done is you're brought to this screen here where it's the option to like put in your manager. So like immediately we have one of the two distinct differences. When you create a club through the game itself, you manage that club. But when you create a club through the editor, that club just exists in the game to operate independently of you. So if you want to like create a derby between a club you manage and a, like a rival club, this, like what I'm showing you right now is just not how you would do it. What I'm going to show you later on be how you do that. So like, let's, um, let's go Dynamo Zanzi. There you go. Look at me. Look at me. I got a receding hairline. Look at me. Now it'll take you here. Now you have to select a club to replace immediately again this is one of what i consider to be um a disadvantage because you're essentially taking a club out of the game and it's reducing the immersion and the realism to some degree because it, it's not like you're relegating a team it's, you're literally deleting them from the game so like what i'm going to do is i'm going to take man city just for the fun of it and where it differs immediately is you're given a squad size and a squad budget. This is important because this will determine um, the population of the squad itself. So you don't create a club. And you come over here, choose a profile. Oh, these are ones that I've done already for testing. So you can either go with kind of like these logos or you can import your own. Click import and it'll take it to the, the pictures directory in your in my documents. Like basically how you get there is you'd go to your, like my computer. Um, the, the full directory is uh, this PC, uh, local disk, users, whatever your name is. And then you'll see a folder called pictures in here. But there's also just like on the right hand side, you will see a little selection for pictures. Um, like I'll put this over here. You can see it there. When you open that up, there's a little thing for pictures here. And this is what you're looking for, this. But what this looks like, uh, when I set all of that, hold on, sorry, let me go to display capture. Um, let me just clean this up a little. Make you smaller. There you go. Sorry, this is what I was talking about. When you open Windows, you'll see this little bar here. It's in your quick access. It's in your pictures. But if you don't have this, what you do is C drive users it'll be whatever your name is and then down here you'll find pictures um like where's my pictures there you go pictures there i go okay so what this looks like is over here and now what i like to do is um because i'll also be showing you how to do it in the editor proper i've named this i've named this picture the id that the club is given when you create it that'll be important later but you just click it pops it open Advantage, this is so much easier than having to add the uh, image in game afterwards. So you can edit the kit colors. This is quite handy. I have a weird bug with my editor at the moment where it just doesn't show 
this stuff. So this is quite useful. You can do this in the editor itself, but I just, I can't. It won't show me the stuff. I know it reasonably well. Like I know I have to do all this at this point from just like force a habit. But everything you see here, you can do in the actual data database itself. So like this is handy. So, okay. Now, name. So we'll just go D. Oops, I have a lot of shit falling. So we're just going to call this data. We're just going to call it the name D, the nickname D. You give a stadium name. Now, what it does is it takes the stadium of that team and essentially just reskins it as yours. So not only are you deleting a club, you're deleting a venue as well and just like reskinning and repurposing it. So this stadium is going to be called uh, Z. And the city, where are we based? Uh, we'll go B, Brentford. Okay. So it's going to move that stadium to Brentford and reskin and re, uh, reformat it. You get the option to retain your backroom staff as well as editing all of these different things like your affiliates, your miscellaneous. Like what's in miscellaneous? Yeah, reputation, club attendance. This is quite handy. Your maximum attendance typically tends to be for like, uh, oh, here we go, the club's average expended, uh, the club's average expected home attendance uh, in its best foreseeable situation. Basically what that means is like a cup final. Um, a home game against a rival. Uh, final day of the season. These are the sort of things. And minimum, it's kind of what is it, in the in the worst foreseeable situation. If you're on like a forty six year uh, winless run and people have just lost interest in you as a sporting entity, you're gonna be lucky to have people in attendance for this club. Fifty thousand people will attend if you are having the worst possible season. 85,000 people attend if you are in the absolute throes of the greatest season any football team has ever produced in the history of the sport. Reputation between 0 and 10,000. Um, <laughs> how it's calculated, who knows. But higher is better. Just put it that way. Okay. Next, Dream Squad. Now, this inherits the squad of uh, whatever club that you've appropriated, basically. And what you can do, like Gavin Bazunu, he's on loan at Portsmouth. What you can do is you can go with this. You can clear squad. <clears throat> you can kind of like create players or you can add players. And then you kind of like select the name. Like we're going to do, what's his name? Like Suso. Um, there we go. Suso. And then we essentially buy him for 30 million budget remaining. I can add him and it takes 30 million away but it increases my squad size. You can also clear the squad, which gets rid of everybody. And this is a really cool feature that I think is actually quite fun. You can autofill that squad where it'll basically buy you a team and it'll essentially purchase these like transfers from those teams where I am going to buy Allison from Liverpool for a hundred, for a for hundred million. It's going to buy Martinez for 41 million. Um, like Marquinhos for 64 million and then you can add players all these different things so like this is this is useful and like populating a squad that that's not something to laugh at and to joke at because like this is going to give me 101 players to put into a fully fully staffed and ready uh, club that will operate at all of the levels that the editor club played at like let me just get in here um there you go i just jumped past that one so go to the squad um skip so i have i was hoping this would show me schedules here we go okay so it's not i i don't think it's here i don't think i have an under 21s um i think that's the best way to look at this i don't have an under 21s Oh, I do have an under 23s. Okay. Then what the hell do you play in? Like, where are your fixtures? I'm used to that being up here. Okay. So, yeah. So, we get entered into, there we go, the under 23s. So, we are in the under 23s competition, and we also have players that we can populate into that. So it creates those. So it's a handy way. It's a, like a quick and dirty way of just inserting in to the game. Now let me show you what this looks like in the actual database itself. So when you load in, um, let me move over here. FM22.
there you go this is what you're looking at now let me let me just move this over here so that you can kind of like actually i move it up here it's probably the best place for it and let me let me just do some magic open this transform flip horizontally now i'm looking at you all again okay so this is what you're looking at load a new database um doesn't matter what version of the database you're loading go down to clubs now you have all the clubs in front of you here what you do is add add a club simple humble beginnings add a club here we go now there's a lot of information to work with here unique id this is important if you want to do any like editing database uh, if you want to do any like um uh, kits and skins and things and like the the logo that I showed you a while ago you're going to want to just write this down somewhere so name again uh, Dynamo Zanzi short name the short name typically will be what's on the actual league table itself where I can do like Dynamo uh, so the club's name is Dynamo Zanzi and when I go into like the club and I click on it it'll show Dynamo Zanzi but like on a league table, it'll show Dynamo. Like, let me see if I can recreate this for you. Like, uh, we have the Premier League here. We have um, Leeds United. So it goes Leeds United. When I click in, there's Leeds United. That's its full name. That's its short name. So six letter name. In, in fixtures themselves, kind of at the top right hand, uh, top left hand corner, it'll show like abbreviations of the teams. What is your abbreviation? This would be DZZ. There you go, simple. It gives you six letters. I prefer three because I just like, you see it in World Cup fixtures, you see it in international fixtures. The JA in Ireland also does three uh, letters. I just think you get a better, I, I know you just get a better feeling of it for me. So three letter name and alternative three letter name. These were introduced with FM22. I don't think they do a huge amount. I'm not entirely sure what relevancy they have, but just if you have a three letter name up here, just basically just repeat it. DZZ, DZZ. Okay, nickname. If I go in here, if I go to Crystal Palace, if I go to History, Overview, and I click Club Background, you will see here. Um, do they have. It doesn't look like they have a nickname. Let's go to Overview. Yeah, nickname. They don't have a nickname. So let's find a club that has a nickname. So. Doesn't look like it. So we'll just, we'll open up D, overview, club background. Here we have, uh, it goes like the D reserve team. Um, it's, it's kind of like another way of referring to your squad in like, um, like West Ham could be like the Hammers or something like that. Like United could be like the Red Devils. And it's like the Red Devils reserve team will play and it does that and interlinks it somewhere, like especially with like media things. So that's where that comes from. Hashtag, um, I've never noticed it in game, but I just, I hashtag short name. Okay, extinct. You click extinct if it's like an, if it's a club that doesn't exist anymore. That's very simple. So nation, base nation, continental club nation. These are more these are more relevant to competitions themselves, but you can get some kind of fun things. The nation will be whatever league, the nationality of the league that that uh, club is playing in. Based nation will just be wherever the stadium is based. The most simple way of putting it, um, we'll go like Total Network Solutions, TNS, the New Saints in Wales. They are a Welsh team, but they are based in England. And continental club competitions basically means in Europe, who does this club represent? Whose league structure? Whose qualification places? So because like TNS would be based in Wales, they would be a Welsh continental cup uh, nation. But it also means that if this is if this is wrong, like if it's England but they play in Wales, they just won't qualify. You saw this with uh, Wellington Phoenix in. Australia, yes, I want to say that, the, the, the New Zealand team, where they were a New Zealand team based in New Zealand playing in, in Australia, but they weren't eligible for the Continental Cup competition because Australia plays in Asia, New Zealand plays in Oceania. So there just there was a mismatch there. You couldn't allow it. City, again, wherever they're based. Local region will auto-update with that city. 
foreground, background color. Where you see this in is like, let's go, let's go back here to Chelsea. So, um, like players. There you go. See the way there's the blue outline and the white text? That would be the background color would be the blue and the outline is the white text. These just happen to match up. Like we'll take it with uh, like, um, no, there we go. With Leeds United, that would be a white background with blue. So that would be white there and blue there. That's how you translate this over across. Whoops. Um, yeah. So year founded, it's just a fun way of putting the year. Status, professional, semi-professional, amateur, always amateur or not set. Um, every now and then I like I like putting like university teams and doing like having a national intervarsity competition and have always amateur squads because the whole point of those teams is just to be talent factories, to just produce players and give them competitive games. Maximum age could be, um, let's see if it'll give me a maximum age. Basically, basically it's can't, can't sign players above that age. Morale based on zero to 20, just like what is the overall morale of your squad? Reputation went over this previously. Is institute. Um, won't tell me what that is. I, I've never quite been able to figure out what institutes are. Like, let's let's go over here. Let's go into clubs. <clears throat> Add condition. Is institute? Yes. Now let's autofill this. Okay, so now we end up in here where you got like the the FAA Center of Excellence. Um, so like, what is what is the common what is the common denominator in a lot of these like the Australian Youth League, under twenty threes, no league. It looks like these are basically academies. That's it. Looks like what these are are academy teams. I've never really played with them, so I'm not entirely sure how they work. So that can be something to play. Whoops, wrong one. I'm just clicking on anything. So that can be something worth looking into to kind of like Dan was answering, yes. That can be worth looking into for institutes. Um, I don't know what benefits it'll give you. I'd have to experiment and play with that one. Is All Star Club. Um, teams that have all star status ha will have this selected. Now there's a lot of kind of like debate uh, about whether or not you can make all star competitions. I've never looked into it. I've just never wanted one in a database that I do. But all star clubs will have all star attached to it. Scouting package. Do you want it to be own division, all surrounding? You can whatever whatever scouting package you want this, but remember that this has like a cost attached to it as well. So if you want like world all, you're gonna have to pay for that as well. So that's the overall reserves. Do you want a reserve? Do you want a reserve team to create? These are very subtle, these are very simple. Um if you want if you want to tell it what reserve team to create and put it into the editor database itself. Create a B team and it'll create that loaded into memory in the editor and allow you to input it into clubs. You'll only ever really use this if you're creating databases and reserve team to create what this does is you assign a division to it where it doesn't put it into memory in the editor. It'll create it for the purposes of populating the league in the actual game itself over here. There are essentially there are different ways of doing the same thing. But I'm going to load this just to show you later um, because when you go down here, it'll create it in the actual club itself and you can then edit that over there. Ownership. Chairperson title. Chairman, president, general manager, founder. Ownership type. Um, you can Google what these mean because um, I'm not an economist. I'm not looking into what these mean. I'm a big fan of member owned because I think it's fun that way. Consortium. Private limited, public limited, member owned, public limited, all these different things. Elections typically are for member owned, where you can select then the max length of term, how long the president can serve, max number of terms, uh, current number of terms, minimum turnout, stop outside takeovers. Stopping an outside takeover can be good if you want a club to like remain member owned and don't ever want them owned by consortiums. So now you move over to stadium. One of the things that the in-game editor did is it basically reskinned the stadium for you. Whereas here, if you're creating a new club, you will also have to create a new stadium. And you can give yourself a training ground as well, which I think is quite cool. And then set your attendance minimum maximum. We already went over the minimum. Minimum is like the, the worst case scenario, maximum best case scenario. 
So training, youth coaching, facilities, recruitment, importance, all these these are kind of like the facilities, uh, the facilities you can find, like if you Google what they all mean, their numerical values, like zero is like insignificant, 20 is state of the art world class. You can set what you want your facilities to be. What we're going to do very quickly is we're going to, we're going to create a stadium. So what you do is you come out in this, in the database section, you go down to stadiums. And again, add. It takes you to this. Um, you don't need to take note of that unique ID. Um, some people make stadium packs. I don't. It's just not what I do. Name the stadium. Where do you want it? What nation? Owner will be, it'll be the club. It'll be the club that we have just made. So let me open this up. Add condition, name, Dynamo. There you go. Bring me here now. Dynamo Zanzi. There you go. It's a signed Dynamo Zanzi. You can go into owner type. Is it owned by the club, council, private, all these different things. You can then kind of like set the C color and now is training ground. Like we saw over here in Dynamo Zanzi, um, you can assign a training ground or you can assign a stadium. If you're signing a training ground, make sure to give it the training ground. Now, capacity, seating capacity. Capacity is, I don't know, whatever it's capacity. Say it's 20,000. There you go. Seating capacity of those 20,000, how many are seats? Say it's 3,000. Capacity for all seater competitions, you can give that 3,000. Basically, it's um, some competitions require all seated competitions like Barclays Premier League. You can circumnavigate um, stadium requirements by capacity for all seater stadiums, put in 20,000. And it will treat those 17,000 terrace seats as seats. Um, it can also be handy for like you'll sometimes sometimes you'll see let's let's go over here and let's go into um like facilities. There you go. So Ellen rolled thirty seven thousand eight hundred and ninety, but thirty seven seven nine nine capacity in normal matches. What's happened there is they have their capacity and seated capacity set to thirty seven eight hundred, but their capacity for all seater competitions is the thirty seven uh four nine uh what is it thirty seven thirty thirty seven seven nine nine. That's what that looks like in practice. And there's some, like, there's some stadiums where you end up taking away, like, a chunk. Like, uh, let, let me open up uh, Atlanta. Atlanta United are one of these competitions where, as you can see, 78,000 Cedar Stadium, of which only 40,000 is used. What's really frustrating about this is it means that it's effectively a 40,000 Cedar Stadium. They will only sell that many tickets and I've never, I've never been able to get rid of this. I've, I've not tried hard, but I've never seen it disappear. It's very fucking annoying and I hate it personally. So we'll go back over here. Um, Come on, you can open. Okay, expansion capacity for if, when you go to the board and you ask them for expansions, you put this in, you say this has an expansion capacity of uh, 60, 65,000. So the, the capacity is what can be, what it can be moved to. Um, sorry, I'm after mixing something up. Used capacity is what I was talking about there. This is the capacity. This is the seated capacity. Um, competitions will request, competitions that request all seater stadiums. Like does the MLS request all seater stadiums? Um, no, let's go back to, let's go back to the Premier League. Newcastle Premier League rules, um, stadium rules. Come on, where are you? There you go. Yeah, uh, minimum minimum seated capacity. Like this is, it'll ask you for this. But there's also, um, I'm pretty sure it says here like no terrace, no terraces. Um, look, I can't find it, but I know it's in here somewhere. The used capacity is the reduced stadium capacity. That's what I meant, sorry. Um, like, if this was in the game itself, we'll say this is 32,000. It's got a seated capacity of 30,000. It's got a used capacity of 31,000. Basically, what this would look like in practice is that the stadium will show as a 32,000 seater, of which 3,000 are seated. If I'm playing in, like, the Champions League, I will only be eligible to sell 31,000 tickets. But because it's got a used capacity of 20,000, the club will only sell 20,000 tickets. That's that's the way of thinking about it. 
pitch type. You have all the different pitch types. Um, I think these affect. Um, I think these affect condition of players on the pitches themselves. I mean, you can't go wrong. You can't go wrong. Grass, synthetic mix, or just grass. You've all the different types. Of, like synthetic, old type, hard. You're going to get injuries. Go fucking lower. Going to have a million injuries. So let's go old type. Pitch length. Um. Okay. Deterioration rate. Basically, is how fast it deteriorates. Um. These are very self-explanatory. Latitude and longitude. You can like specifically pinpoint where you want your stadium to be. And let me give you an example of what this looks like. So I've I've opened Google Maps here and let's just let's just say I'm starting a club in Thurlis. So I zoom into Thurlis and this is something that I like doing sometimes where let's go look for like let's go look for somewhere we could build a stadium. Because let's just let's pretend we're starting from scratch. So over here, so you so you have a university. Um You've got the main road with a road coming out here. So we could like purchase this space here. So if I want my club to, to be here, right click. There are my large and long shoot. 52 minus 7. 52 minus 7. Now, it can be accurate up to three decimal places. I just don't want to have to remember all this state. How good is it? Environment. Um, basic standard of the art, uh, state of the art standard basics. Um, I think this affects like kind of like the reputation of the club as well. Um, you what is it used by national teams? It's very self-explanatory. Uh, you can, if it's not used in continental finals, basically what this does is it takes the stadium out of the stadium pool. Because like if this was like a ninety thousand seater stadium, but I didn't want it being selected for um cup finals, I just take it out. You can also have as like an old stadium, like um, Lansdowne Road in Dublin is in the game, but it's a demolished stadium, so they have it as extinct. Is it covered? Does it have a roof? Um, uh, sorry, does it have like covered stands? Retractable roof. Think of the Millennium Stadium. Actually, Atlanta Stadium. The um, fuck, I can't remember what it's called now. Mercedes Benz Arena, I think it's called. Under soil heating just means that you won't get games abandoned for um, um, frozen temperatures. Digital ad hoardings. Do you want digital ad hoardings? It's just, it's a kind of quality of life looking thing. Nearby stadium. I've, again, I've never seen this pop up. I think I think the only time you might see this in game would be something like where um, Goodison Park and Anfield are, they're like, they're like a, you can see the stadiums from each other's stands. They just have one park separating them. So that'd be a nearby stadium. But like, if you're creating a club, you might as well create a stadium. Because this stadium, uh, the name is going to be Zenzi Stadium. There we go. I'm, I'm just not going to bother doing everything else. Go over here, search name Zenzi. I should appear here, Zenzi Stadium. Now I've given myself a stadium. Uh, you can update these in your own time. Now, do you want to have it so that you will move stadium at some point? You can go into stadium change. Add so stadium move, training ground move, youth ground move, reserve, reserve stadium move. You can kind of find, select these. You select the new stadium. You select when you want them to move. And then you can also kind of like, if this is like too difficult to read, you can then select that and like look at all of them in greater detail. Are you expecting an attendance to change? You can change that. Season tickets. Like this is, there's a, see what I mean? It's a lot more powerful. You get more out of this editor. Alternative stadiums. Um, if your stadium is undergoing a rejuvenation or whatever, you can also select like other grounds that you play in. Supporter bands, stadium moves, stadium change and stadium move is very similar. They essentially do the same job. Finances. Okay. Balance. All of this, uh, the, the intricacies of finance in Football Manager is something that is difficult to... Like f with a fine tooth comb, it's difficult to like pinpoint down what you want this to be. Setting your transfer budget, maximum wage allowed, all these different things. But what many people might be interested in would be like the rich benefactor. This is your sugar daddies. Do you want a foreground, background, underwriter, underwriter, expects return? Expects return just means that they're looking for you to profit. They don't want to be running a loss. loss. Underwriter, what this means is if you get debts, they'll write off your debts. 
a background sugar daddy would be somebody that's going to pump money into the back of the club but doesn't really um they're going to invest like facilities invest like stadium they're not going to do a huge amount to like subsidize wages that's where a foreground sugar daddy will do um think of like roman abramovich at chelsea that's the perfect example i can think of um in administration if you select this you'll start off in administration there you go transfer uh, embargoes all of these are the same like other income do you want to add other income sources like you can have a government or a grant council you can also have a kit sponsorship again these are not available to you in the create a club you don't get this option through the main game you only get this through the actual editor database itself do you want to give yourself debts how are you doing in financial fair play player buyback clauses if you want to work on um, kind of like the realism of integrating a club into the competition itself competitions so general so division will be wherever you were the last division will be the last division you played in so it just if these have different divisions um it kind of um, i can't think of any in-game i can't think of any off the top of my head but last position um will when it draws something so like let me let me open like manchester city so uh, actually no, arsenal if you go into the history so Arsenal have eight and eighth. This eighth here um will no sorry, sorry, I, I'm getting ahead of myself. You've to go to um Premier Division. Um see it here. Season preview. I'm set for first, but you'll see like promoted, promoted, promoted. How it gets those P's is through that last division. So if you want the game to think you're a promoted squad, you have to give yourself of a last division, which is one underneath, while also selecting the actual position itself that you came through, because that position will also be used through generating of seedings for kind of like cup competitions, European places. Like if you had like Manchester City, they finished the league, so their last division will be the same as the current division, but their last position will be one, telling the game this person won that division so that it can actually pull that in and give them the European spot. Next division will be for like winter leagues where you sometimes have, uh, like with the Irish league and the the, the Brazilian league, uh, you can, be, because the start date is naturally in the middle of one of those leagues, you end up coming in mid-season. So if you start at the next season, um, it'll give you who is like accurate to that new season that's what that's for european coefficient rankings um if this confuses you i recommend you to not touch it and actually just google european coefficients google club coefficients understand how they work before you tinker with them because see how it's zero to 50 you might be inclined to go okay well they're they're a very successful club so i'm going to say like 49 49 and 50 that seems fair but let's go back to database let's go back to club let's go back to clubs let's uh get rid of you and let's apply now let's go to um let's say Bayern Munich one of the most successful European sides they're routinely performing really well oh oh look how low these are compared to what you would expect them to be zero to 50 50 is a perfect fucking score absolutely perfect nobody ever gets perfect but this gives them a really high European reading, uh, seeding. Um, look into how these work so you can give accurate numbers. That's that's the advice I'm going to give you for this. So let's go back here. Okay, regional divisions. You will ass again. This has more to do with the actual kind of like competitions and determining for like if depending on where in the pyramid you are. If there's like subdivisions that are based on regional geographic base uh, basises, you will input a regional division to tell it where to put that club. Um, it's useful for promotions and relegation so that the club will accurately be in a geographic region. You have to set the level. It's very straightforward once you do it a few times. Starting media expectations. I haven't played around with this, so it'd be worth kind of looking into and playing with. Club vision gives you the opportunity to play with this. Again, I've never really played around with this, so I don't really know how that works. Tactical attributes. These would be like you have clubs like preferred. Um, can I see it here? Like 
I don't know if I can find it, but like clubs tend to have like a preferred formation. They have like sometimes when you take over a club, it'll be like oh, this team has a history of playing this style of football with um this particular um uh, formation. Here is where you can kind of set these supporter profiles and contract types. Contract types are really useful for what do you want your clubs to like just have as basic contracts. Do you want them to offer um like full contracts to star players or for youngsters, offer them part-time contracts. Kits and colours, like I said, home. I have a weird bug. It's not showing me the shirts, but this is where you'd edit all of this. And the text, let me just explain. The shirt is whatever the shirt is. The icon is when you're in the 2D match engine, what you see the little dots. The text indicates the kit colour text. Like that's the text. So red and white. So it would be, you'd switch this to red. And there's red and white. Shorts, socks, very simple. So you have your home kit, your away kit, your third kit. Third kit is traditionally European kits and you have your goalkeeper kits as well. Now, staff and players, this is where it gets annoying for this editor database because you have to manually select all of this, but you, it, it, the what the game in the creator club through football manager itself does is it just gives you a highlight of players with a searchability function here if i want to add players i have to go down to players then i have to select add see that it's loading into memory half a million people no no like these are directors performances i have to go into conditions and i need to like segregate this down based on the criteria that i want it's so much more powerful but so much more tedious. Like I have to go over here. Where is it? Um, um, God, player attribute, no. Job preferences. These are actual jobs. So it would be player attribute, positions, other, no. So I'm, try I'm trying to get like, was it? Maybe it's just job. Is job up here? Yeah, job, here we go, job. Player, scroll all the way down, player, and there we go. Now it's it's gotten rid of like 200,000 people and I'm only looking at players. This is where it gets annoying and you have to like input that for everybody and like if you want goalkeepers, you have to go to, con you go add condition, go to like player attributes, positions, input the position and it'll be between zero and 20 what that indicates is like let's take someone like uh, jordan henderson see the way you've got the differing because like henderson his attacking see his attacking midfield because it's not like vibrant green that'd be maybe like a 13 in the attacking midfield role but he's got 20 in both midfield and defensive midfield maybe a 15 in defense um that's how you end up with a map like this and then you have to input for what they are at least so like this is tedious and time consuming you set the board set the coaching staff their managers players away on loan players with testimonials all these different things you can set relationships all those different things relationships itself rival club linked clubs the clubs you don't like like you can set so that they'll never they'll never like transfer with each other like at a rival club here clubs don't transfer players they will never transfer players now when you do this don't get this option in the create a club you can create club icons, club legends. Again, where this comes down is in, if you go to Liverpool here, go to general, down, oh no, wrong one, profile. Here you go. Legends, icons, favorite personnel. So you get the you get the option to like really properly in-depth uh, customize and like refine what your club looks like in game. And again, like if you're looking to populate the world with something that you want to find tune with a with a fine tooth comb the editor might be the best way of doing it but if you just want to create something with the bare bones that has enough of a scaffold for you to just get stuck into a save using the game itself might be the better option now records um these are just your club records you can access your club records by uh like history uh competitions um records here you go these are all the records you would have to input them over here club runs team league histories this is what this is see all these lines this has third this has second 
to how you recreate this is you do two. The year will be the year it's finalized. So for instance, here is 2020, 21. So it'll be 20, uh, 2021. So this would be 2021 order. It's fine. You input the division position one, and then you input all of these stats that you want. And then this would be 2020 position four. Was it? No, it was two. And. Oh, wait, sorry. Oh yeah. Third. Jeez. I thought we actually did quite well last season, considering how appalling that mid season was. So. Let's let's edit this. This should actually be one and that should be three. And when you when you load into the game, what it'll do is it'll draw in these two data points with that league and it'll like populate out a league structure. So that can be a really handy way of doing it. But what you also do is um to get access to this, you see this screen here, honors, you have to actually go into the 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 competition history. Like let me let me show you very quickly what this would look like. Um, so I've gone out back to database competitions. Let's load FIFA World Cup history. And then what you do is you add, let's go all the way to the, uh, it'll put in 2000. So look at the format here, 2006, 2006, 2006. Now this is because it's just held in one year. If it's held across seasons, you'll have the start year would be like, uh, 1999. So this would be the 9900 season who finished first, who finished second. If you input first Dynamo Zanzi, um, Zanzi will get that competition win, but it won't ever appear here. It'll appear up here. So this is where you get your full customizations of all these different things. You can input the cup history as well. I haven't played around with this, so I don't know exactly what it looks like. And now we reach the end. And like I said here, reserve team, this inputs it into the competition where what that would let, let me just show you what that would look like if I was to put it into a competition itself. We'll go Premier League. So if I go teams and um no, I have to go Dynamo Zanzi, so I have to put this into Premier League. So let's go name, let's go Premier Premier League. Input into Premier League. Okay. Now, the Premier League itself, if you go to teams, still got 20 teams. But if I go to reserve teams, there you go. Dynamo Zanzi has a reserve team in this league. So for the purposes of actually populating this league, this is now a 21 team league. And if I go to like rules, I can't just because I don't have any rules made. Um, it'll say there's 21. So just let's just like uh, none. OK, so like I said, create a reserve team B down here, Dynamo Zanzi B. And you get to configure that B team. What division do they play in? What stadium do they play in? You have their names. You can select all these different teams themselves. Now, unfortunately, you can't really mess around with this. Like if I put an N, auto resolves back to B. You can set the attendance, to all these different things. Kits for all this. You can assign players and staff. It's essentially, it's a mini club inside your club. And that is how you configure those B teams. And you can give them a league and make sure that league is populated and has rules set up for it. But that's basically customizing the club itself. So I've I've showed you what I've showed you the difference between the two. So it's it's up to you which you think is best for the needs you have, because it it really comes down to that. What are your needs? Um, if you want to create um, an intricate, vibrant club that has a huge updated history that exists like already in the world itself, go with the football manager editor, go with this and just invest the time that it needs to actually create it. But if you just want to get stuck into a save and you just want to create a team and populate it with players very quickly to be able to actually like start playing within 10 minutes of starting, Go through the creator club editor that is the that's the, probably the best way of doing that so my friends that's your that's your editor content for this week um hope hope i'm doing better in the the dynamo diaries anyway because um i'm just about to take the whales job um we'll we'll see what happens there um friends i'll catch you in the next one cheerio <laughs>